Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. And today is part three of my five-part interview with Dick and Bettinger and Natasha Swerdloff, the co-authors of the book, Coming Home, and also my co-presenters at an upcoming retreat in Ojai, California, called Silent Mind, Beautiful Feeling, Experiencing the Heart of the Three Principles. And if you're interested in finding out more about that retreat and joining us, check out michaelneal.org forward slash silent mind. So one of the, I think, fundamental confusions when when I hear talk uh, hear people talking about the three principles, is 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 that connection between the description and the thing that is being described. So you've Ooh. talked about it, Dickon, in terms of concept. You talked about it, Natasha, in terms of metaphor. For me, there's something about being able to be clean on the difference between the description and that which is being described, which is the difference between somebody who's really impactful in their sharing of this and somebody who is merely articulate. And, and, and I'm wondering if, if there's enough there for us to build a conversation around, because it, it, for me, the biggest breakthrough that I remember having in my understanding of the principles was when Sandy Crott asked me one day why I kept asking her what consciousness is. And I realized in her asking me that, that I kept going, well, so what's consciousness again? Is because I was trying to get her articulation clear enough that I could either agree with it or disagree with it. And it was when I saw that and realized the stupidity of that as a learning strategy. But, but also then when I began to think in terms of not the word, but that which the word was attempting to describe, well, you know that space that is still there when you close your eyes, the world that doesn't go away when you block out the senses. That's what we're describing when we use the word consciousness. And it was the first time where my experience of the principles was mm. at that level, at a, at a feeling level, mm. more mm. than at a conceptual level. So I just love, I don't even really have a question other than what's your experience of that? What do you notice about that? Well, as often as Sid said, go beyond the words. I, too, spent years trying to think about the principles and pin them down and get a better way of understanding them intellectually. And who knows? I, I don't know if that's a phase. Not everybody seems to go through it, but a lot of us sure did. And <clears throat> it's sort of like my intellect had to get enough and settle down enough that then I could set it aside. But this whole notion of going beyond the words be, started for me to become apparent in those moments when I'd be hearing anybody, somebody talking about the principles or I'd be reading about the principles and I would stop trying to figure it out. And I just was at peace. I just, then all of a sudden, the words weren't about themselves or meaning. They were pointers toward that peaceful, open, feelingful, quiet space that I was in. And I really started to benefit from hearing other people teach or Sid teach when I realized that every single word said about the principles is just pointing us toward the experience of that same space. 
And then it that, got interesting. Well, and that, that I, I've been speaking to a bunch of people in the past few, few months as more people kind of come to this from other arenas. And, and they often ask about, well, you, you know, which teacher says it right? You know, which, which teacher is most accurate or which version of the teaching or should I listen to all the teachings and collate? And, and, and my best answer to date has been, as best I can tell, anyone who is a teacher of, of, of these principles is essentially saying, go beyond the known, go beyond the words, go to the space in you, within you, where everything comes from and dwell in it. And so the idea that it matters how somebody articulates that as opposed to, I don't know, did it get you to go beyond the word and go beyond the known and dwell in that space in you? Then it was great teaching. Did it not? Then it wasn't such great teaching. Yeah. And Love I that. like that because it, it takes us out of the realm of getting it right. Mm -hmm. And into the realm of what is it that we're actually up to? Or that somebody has it right. You know, where we're still looking outside for what's right. There's a story I share a lot, but it's because I love it, about Nathaniel Brandon, the, the father of the self-esteem movement. And he apparently was giving a talk to a group of women um, on, on personal responsibility and accountability. The talk was, no was coming. And he was basically talking about how there, there's no one's coming to rescue you you're looking for you will find inside yourself and one of the women raised her hands and said but nathaniel you came and he said well yeah but i only came to let you know that no one is coming and in a way i do see that as part of our role as teachers is 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 we're here to say you don't need external teachers other than to point you back again and again to the wisdom within, to the knowing within, to the space within, to what you guys talk about in the book as home. And I've had pretty much the same learning strategy as, as you two in trying to get it intellectually first and then letting go of it and, and starting to see something. And it's so interesting sometimes meeting people who like my wonderful husband, who's a gardener, who just gets it. It's just, well, sometimes I'll, I'll try things out. Have you noticed? And he goes, of course. You know, of course it's that way. But there's not so many words. It's a knowing. And I, I love that. And I love how, in terms of all these different teachers, sometimes when people come to me and they're just at the beginning of this journey, and they go, well, who should, I, who should I, you know, listen to? And I go, well, try everyone. And some of some people, there's going to be somebody who just helps you get this sense, get this knowing from inside. And it might be somebody who I would listen to and go, nope, doesn't do it for me. Um, and it, it, I think it's curious and it's fun that we are different in that way. Somebody gets something out of someone that I, I wouldn't and then others that I really think are fantastic then they go no didn't do it for me i think I'll, i i think whenever we are face to face with a client or a group of people the first things out of our mouth should be go home you're not going to get wisdom from me or for any other teacher or from this place you've come to you can only find it deep within the quiet of your own mind I worked with a client once and boy, he thought I had the answer for him. And he tried and tried and tried. And I, I just did the best I could to point him toward where answers come from and how they arise spontaneously in a mind that's open to them. And at a certain point, for whatever reason, something clicked in about that, but I had no idea how deeply it clicked in. 
and we stopped working. And I, I did see him all summer. And then at the end of the summer, I ran into him and I said, how you doing? And he went on and on talking about how all the things that had been diff difficult about his life had become easy. And I said, so what are you doing? And he says, well, I've been doing a lot of reading. And I said, really, what, what are you reading? He says, well, just one book. I said, one book, wow, what is that? My, my seeker got curious. <laughs> and, and he goes, the one book. I, I said, well, what, which one? And he goes, the one in here. Ooh. <laughs> it really, I mean, yeah. I mean, but he, he, was, he was living that. He was, yeah. he had learned how to, look within for the answers. It was beautiful. That capacity we all have to look within for the answers, as Dickon was just talking about, is the capacity that, that allows us to go deeper in this exploration. And in fact, in part four of our ongoing conversation, Dick and Natasha and I discuss what it means to go deeper and, and how do we do it. If you'd like to learn more about the ideas that we're talking about and be part of a four-day exploration, then you can join us for the Silent Mind Beautiful Feeling Retreat in Ojai, California. And that is from February 22nd to 25th of 2018. And you can learn all about it and get your place at michaelneal.org forward slash silent mind. Until tomorrow, have fun, learn heaps. We'll talk with you then.